Welcome everybody, thank you for coming. I'm Dr. Brian Zilliger, I'm an assistant professor in the HPPE department, and I'm filling in for Dr. Robinson, who mentored um, Danielle and Ryan here, who are gonna to talk to you about uh, fitness age testing and, um, and football players. All right, so as you mentioned, my name is Ryan Orr, and this is Danielle Mantelli. Thank you everybody for coming, making Student Scholar Days a little bit more popular and so on. Um, like we said, we're going to be talking about fitness age of out of state football players. <clears throat> As an introduction here, we're going to be talking about fitness age testing, um, what it can be used for, different purposes, and different components of it, and give you a little breakdown of that. Next, we're going to go into our research, kind of the study we did, methods, procedures, and then go into a little bit of discussion of what our research was, what the, uh, our, whether our hypothesis was correct or not, and so on. And then, obviously, we went to our exercise nutrition prescription for the athletes. The athletes came to us with goals and we gave them exercise nutrition prescriptions at the end of the fitness age testing. And then obviously we'll have a conclusion, a little summary at the end to kind of give you guys a recap of what we went over. So what is the purpose of fitness testing in general? Well, we want to assess the initial fitness levels of the individuals that come to us and use those results to structure them a training program and a nutrition program in the hopes of reaching the goals that they want to reach. And we can also assess the changes in their fitness levels over time. So when we prescribe them that uh, training program, then we can assess it a couple months later and see how well is it working or do we need to change a couple things up to further reach their goals. The purpose of our study was to do fitness age testing on some Adam State football players. And we wanted to determine and compare the current fitness levels and this was at the end of the 2015 football season, about a week after. And we were comparing defense and offensive football players. So fitness age testing. It uses a series of different exercises to test the level of fitness and it uses four categories. And it calculates their scores represented as an age. So this age is not like I'm 23 years old, it's actually the physiological age, so your fitness level for that age. And we, the four categories are cardiorespiratory fitness, body composition, flexibility, and muscular strength and endurance. And very important to note is in fitness age testing, the scores range from 18 to 80. So 18 is the best, you're, you're really fit, and 80 is the worst, you're about as fit as an 80 year old would be, so not good. So as Danielle mentioned, there are four components to the to the fitness age testing. The first is going to be cardiorespiratory fitness. And we can just break it into its two words in cardio and respiratory. We can talk about cardio, it talks about the heart, and then respiratory talks about the lungs and your pulmonary system. And so basically when we put that together with fitness, we can talk about how the heart and the lungs supply oxygen and fuel to your muscles and your body's tissues while you're working out, as well as getting rid of the fatigue products through working out. So the way we measured it is through a three minute step test. Basically step up and down for three minutes and then we take your heart rate. Other ways of measuring it are a VO2 max, something like that, a mild test, and then you can take their heart rate after. Um, examples of cardiorespiratory exercise are gonna be something like running, you can do biking, swimming, anything rowing, and then obviously that's gonna get your heart going and it's gonna get your body pumping more blood and more oxygen to your muscles and muscle tissues. The next thing that we went into was body composition. Basically, body composition is the percentages of fat and fat-free mass that make up the human body or make up our participants' bodies. And there's more things that you can look into in this. Included in fat-free mass are different organs, water, muscle tissue. And so obviously we can look into those different things as well if we had more technology. However, the way we used it was through skinfold calipers. So basically you pinch different points on the skin and you measure it with a skinfold caliper. You place it into an equation and it gives you your body fat percentage or for our example we place it into the fitness age software and it gives us a fitness age for body composition. <clears throat> Next we talked about flexibility. The ability of the joints and muscles to move throughout their full range of motion. So the example we did for our test is and for the fitness age test is the sit and reach test and I'm sure we've all done that. It's, the, it's exemplified in the picture here below. Other things that you can do is reaching down your toes, holding it for 10 to 30 seconds, um, some different shoulder stretches where you put your arm behind your head and different things like that are all going to work the flexibility and put the muscles through their full range of motion. Finally, we looked into muscular strength and endurance. Strength is something that we didn't really cover 
in the fitness age test, but I wanted to give you guys a definition of it so you kind of knew. Strength looks at the ability of a muscle group to, de to develop maximal contractile force for a single repetition. So that's going to be an example of that is just a one rep max. Obviously, you lift as much weight as you can one time, either in the bench max or the squat max, whatever weight it is, you lift at one maximal contractile force. Endurance, however, we did test in the fitness age, and endurance is the ability of a muscle group to develop a submaximal contraction for elongated periods. So the way we tested it is through as many push-ups as you can do, keeping the same pace. Another way we tested it is through as many sit-ups as you can do throughout one minute. Other ways that you can do endurance lifting exercises are going to be any repetitions of an exercise that are over about 14 repetitions are going to be an endurance exercise at that point. <clears throat> So now that we know kind of what fitness age is and what it tests, we can look into what our hypothesis was. And we believed that the defensive side of the ball would have a lower overall fitness age, including cardiorespiratory, flexibility, body composition, and muscular strength and endurance. We believe this mainly because of the practice styles. The practice style defensive starts with a pursuit drill, which they run basically from the ball to one part on the field, back to the ball, and then back to the sideline. And throughout doing this, that's more cardiorespiratory endurance than typically offense would do at the start of practice. Along with throughout practice, they have to run all the way to the ball throughout the whole play. So that's going to add another cardiorespiratory element to the practice, as opposed to we know football as about a six second play and then a 30 second break in between, another six second play and another 30 second break in between. So methods and procedures. So before we did any testing at all, we gave each participant a physical activity readiness questionnaire, so we call it the PARQ. And this is just a simple general seven yes or no question questionnaire. And it's t looking at the general health of the individual and their ability to be able to exercise safely. Then we gave them health screening questionnaire, the HSQ, and this goes more in depth into their health history. It looks at uh, cardiovascular health, it looks at pulmonary health, and it also takes into account any metabolic diseases they may have, like diabetes and stuff like that. Then we gave them a consent form, and this was specific to the fitness age test. We recorded their date of birth, and we asked them for their current activity levels. So, since it's being at, right after season, it may be different. It was a little less than, you know, what you would think an athlete is, but we asked them the type of activity they do, uh, the days per week, and the volume and intensity that they do it at. We also started by taking their height and weight, and we did this with their shoes off, and they were just in a shorts and a t-shirt for testing. And we took their height in feet and inches and their weight in pounds. So then we moved on to the measurements. So first, the anthrop anthropometric measurements, we took circumferences. So we did this on both sides of the body. We took measurements with a tape measure. We measured it around their chest. We measured it on their waist at the narrowest part, around their hips at the widest part, around their thighs, and around their calves. And during these uh, tests, the athlete was relaxed. They weren't flexed or anything like that. Second, we did body composition. Like Ryan mentioned earlier, we took the skin fold measurement at four sites. And just like the picture shows, to the right of the belly button, we took the abdomen. The ilium is more to the side above your hip. The triceps are on the back of your arm, and then we took it right in the middle of the thigh. For cardiorespiratory endurance, uh, we did the three-minute step test. So first, we let the athlete relax for a while so that we could get their resting heart rate. Then we gave them the three-minute step test, and this is about a 12-inch box. You step up, down, and it goes for three minutes to a 96 beat per minute metronome. And then we have them sit down right away and take their heart rate for 60 seconds to see how it decreases, which is their recovery rate. Then we did flexibility, and we did this using the sit and reach test like the picture showed before. And then muscular strength and endurance. So we did sit-ups. Uh, this was proper form, however many you could do in a minute. And you had to touch your head back all the way, and then your elbows were crossed and your knees go over. Your elbows go over your knees. And push-ups also had to be in the correct form. You go all the way down and come all the way up at the same pace, no breaks, and no stopping, so. So this is an example of what the fitness age software shows to us once we plug in all of these different numbers that we assess. 
This is an example of a 30-year-old female, Jane Fitness. Um, and we can look into the individual numbers for each category and compare it to her chronological age and get kind of an example of what she should be doing in that category. So for here we have strength, and that's at age 29. So as a 30-year-old with an age 29 strength, whatever her strength regimen is, her lifting regimen, um, different types of strength exercises that she does, we're going to tell her that she can continue to do that because she's already at a lower age than her physiological age, and that's going to be good. However, see, in flexibility, cardiorespiratory, and body composition, all of those are higher than we would hope them to be, obviously, because they are higher than her chronological age. So we're going to ask her to do some flexibility exercises, maybe some yoga in the morning, either way. Cardiorespiratory exercises, like we said, running, swimming, biking, rowing, cycling, anything like that. And then with body composition, a big part of that is nutrition, as well as if we increase the other three, then that will be, a, that will be good as well. However, nutrition is going to play a big role in the body composition. So as you can see here, the 30-year-old female, overall fitness age of 42, she's going to be about 12 years older physiologically than she is chronologically, and so there's definitely some room to work on here. So these are our results from the test we did. So there's two graphs comparing offense and defense. We have the five athletes that we tested in each category. Then we have the mean and the standard deviation. So if we look at the overall fitness age for both, for offense, the lowest was 20, and the highest was 37. So the mean, that came out to be 27, and there's a standard deviation of 6.4. If you look at cardiorespiratory fitness, there's a greater standard deviation, which means there's a different spread of uh, ages, so from 19 to 78. 19 is pretty good, 78, not so good. So you compare the offense, the average fitness age overall was 27, and the defense was 32, which is higher, so the defense is less fit than the offense. We can look into it here as well. Fitness age overall, you can see the defense in orange and the offense in blue. Again, we say the lower overall fitness age is better, so blue. Offense, better overall fitness age. The cardiorespiratory we looked into and we figured that the reason it was so high is because of what we had stated before that football isn't typically a cardiorespiratory or an endurance sport. It's that six second play, maximum six second play, and then a 30 second break. You're not really getting into your aerobic energy system as much as somebody in track and field would or in cross country, something like that. And so we figured that's why the cardiorespiratory was so high. Body composition, we did figure it would be pretty low, and it was around the 20-year-old age range where our participants were. Then flexibility was a little bit high, it's around 30, and you can see that the offense was a little bit older in that category, however, it was not very significant. And so then, muscular strength and endurance as well, we also figured, as a football player, muscular strength and endurance was something that they stress pretty highly on the field, obviously, because of the strength component of football, going up against somebody one-on-one -on -one and trying to beat them with strength, obviously. So then with that data we and our participants' goals, we came up with basically two groups of exercise prescriptions. About five of the individuals came to us and said that they wanted to gain weight, and about five of them came to us and said they wanted to lose weight. Now when they talk about gain weight, most of them are typically talking about gaining lean muscle. However, some positions, it doesn't matter whether you gain lean muscle or gain lean muscle and a little bit of fat. So obviously, we, did some of, we catered it to each individual as well. So for cardiorespiratory, everybody needed to increase that, as we saw in our last graph in our data tables. They were all up around 50 years old as their physiological age. And so if we can get that lower, then that's going to be better for everybody. The way we did this is by increasing running, plyometrics, swimming, cycling, different stuff like that. And the reason we put plyometrics into the weight gain category is because it's also going to be working a lot of their endurance muscles. And if they do get around that 8 to 12 reps, they're going to be also growing their muscles and typically gaining weight. <clears throat> so for flexibility, we said obviously increase because they were all around that 30 age range for the physiological age. And then we said dynamic prior to exercise. So for, our dynamic, for uh, dynamic exercise stretching, we look at something like high knees, lunges, soldier walks, something like that. And we can do that something that's going to be a sport specific exercise and stretch their muscles and get them ready for exercise. Then we can look at the static after exercise. Static is the, is the stretching that typically all of us have done in our PE classes where you reach down, 
touch your toes and hold it for 30 seconds, and do that throughout different stretches and different muscle groups. And that's going to be for after exercise as well. And then muscular strength and endurance. We structure it towards hypertrophy more, obviously. All of the athletes, the football athletes, were lifting pretty much amount that is suitable to gaining weight and gaining strength. Three to five times a week was about where they were, so we said lifting time is good. However, we can structure it more towards hypertrophy, which is about eight to 12 reps, 60 to 80 percent max, three to five sets, two to three times a week with rest. So we wanted them to lift eight to 12 reps, which is obviously gonna increase their muscle hypertrophy. And muscle hypertrophy is basically the growing of the individual muscle fibers, which is gonna help them gain weight in the long run. <clears throat> Nutritionally, we're going to increase their protein intake to about 2.4 grams per kilogram of body weight. And we know that every pound is about 2.2 kilograms. So in turn, we can take our weight in pounds and basically just say that that's about how much protein we need to intake per day. For carbohydrates, we need to maintain the carbohydrates for energy, obviously. That's going to help us fuel us through the day, help us get through our lifts and our endurance exercises. As well as fats for energy, we want unsaturated fats like avocados, fish, the fatty acids in there, that's going to help us maintain our health and our heart health as well as some of our vascularity. So for those who wanted to lose weight, it's kind of the same thing as Ryan was just talking about. We want to increase the running, the plyo, swimming, cycling, and you can do whatever exercise that best fits you and you like to do and enjoy so that you'll do it more often because uh, we want to increase the time you do it and we want to increase the ten intensity as well. And this will help with you losing the body fat that you want to lose. As far as flexibility, of course, everyone can improve on this. Increase it, and you can do flexibility exercises in the morning when you wake up, not just at practice. You can do it before you go to bed. And then muscular strength and endurance. Obviously, they're still lifting. They're still maintaining their strength, so we want them to keep that up. But we want them to lose the fat weight. So as far as nutrition goes, they can maintain their protein because they're going to need that for lifting weights. But we need to get them healthy carbs for energy. They're going to be doing a little more running, a little more exercise. So they need the carbs for energy. It's not going to make you pack on the fat like, we, like the stereotype says. Uh, but carbs are good for energy. And we also need to reduce the fat intake, especially saturated fat. Uh, you still need fat in your diet, but let's tailor it more to unsaturated fat, and it's going to be good for your body, and it also gives you a little bit of energy, too. Now, for our discussion, obviously our hypothesis was not supported. If you remember, our hypothesis was that the defensive side of the ball would have a lower overall fitness age. However, the offensive of side of the ball did have a lower overall fitness age. Improvements in our study design can be timing. We did test them one week after the football season was over. So some of the athletes may have done nothing all week. Some of them may have continued their training regimen. Um, we just had a lot of discrepancy there. Obviously, motivation levels was something that is tough to control, but if we could have controlled it, I think it would have made a difference. Some individuals came in ready to go, trying to compete with the person next to them. Other individuals came in and tried to just go through the motions and kind of get it done. Obviously, participant numbers, we did only have 10 participants, as we said. If we can include that number and, and raise that number, then we're obviously going to get more reliable data. And then participant matching is something that I'll explain on this slide. We had defensively, we had a safety, three defensive ends, and a linebacker. Offensively, we had three wide receivers, a running back, and a tight end. So as you look up, if you know football at all, O-line matches up with D-line, linebackers with running backs and tight ends, and then safeties would be with wide receivers and cornerbacks as well. And so if we, we had three defensive ends, and if we match them up against the three wide receivers, the three wide receivers are going to be some of the fittest individuals on the field, as opposed to the D linemen are going to be some of the bigger individuals on the field. So if we could have matched up more O-line, D-line, wide receiver, cornerbacks, matches like that, I think that our results would have been also more reliable and conclusive. <clears throat> However, in summary, fitness age testing is still valid and purposeful. It does serve a purpose. We can use it to assess fitness changes. We can use it to assess starting fitness levels and things like that, and we can use it to continue our, and also I think that fitness age testing is something that's pretty easy for everybody to understand. If you're 30 years old, I think that obviously you know that your physiological age should be below 30 and that would be something that is going to help you do that. Results were not conclusive, however with a larger group of more specific participants, we can definitely incur more of a reliable result for this study. And that is all. Anybody have any questions for us?
Yeah. So I understand that obviously having a, a lower fitness age testing is better, but my question is, isn't it unrealistic to ask, and I'm totally making this up, like a 50 year old to have an 18? Um, so I wouldn't say that it's a, I wouldn't, oh go ahead, continue, I'm sorry. So shouldn't, shouldn't you actually be comparing what the deviation is from their actual age to their fitness age, as opposed to just what their fitness age is, because at some point it becomes unrealistic, right, to have, depending upon what their starting age is, to have that low of a fitness age. The thing about that is, if you're a 50 year old, you want a fitness age score of 50, or, you know, like maybe to 40. If you're really fit, you're gonna have a lower fitness age, but we're not asking a 40-year-old to have an 18-year-old fitness age. So that's kind of where, the, the goal is to be at your age or a little below. So it's not that big of a spread as far as that goes. I don't know if you wanted to add anything, Ryan. Yeah, with our study, the, the, the ages of the individuals that we were testing were all around 20 years old. So we looked at that and they should have been towards the very low end of the spectrum. And so when we saw the 50 and 60-year-old uh, cardiorespiratory scores, that was definitely concerning to us. But yes, definitely what Danielle said as well, we're not going to expect a 50 year old to be 18, but it definitely is possible for a 50 year old to score at 18 on all of these different tests as well. So, did that answer your question? Or is there yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. What kind of variance did you see within the uh, groups that participated, like even within the offensive side, the defensive side? You mean in the fitness ages? Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, our variances were, I mean, I can go back to our results here, and you can see that in even cardiorespiratory here, we have one that's 18 and one that's 80. So, we have one that is the most physically fit in cardiorespiratory, and one that is the absolute least physically fit. So, that's one, one thing also that I think had to do with our matching of the participants, like I said, with the defense, defensive lineman, offensive lineman. I think that if we would have had more similar participants, those numbers wouldn't have been as crazy, as crazy different. They would have all been somewhere around the same number. So our, our variances were, our ranges were very big for obviously these different categories, cardiorespiratory being the main one. But did that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Is there um, that one rep max you were talking about, is there like a place for that in the age testing? Um, in the fitness age testing, no. I think that it could be a component that, that it would be helpful for them to add. However, they don't have a one rep max in the fitness age testing. They only do basically endurance exercises through the, as many push-ups as you can do and then as many sit-ups as you can do in one minute. So there is not a one rep max in the fitness age test, no. Do you think it will lower the age if someone that, that their weight is pushing more weight? I think definitely, especially for our population, their overall ages would have gone way down because we are working with football players and typically football players are going to lift way more weight first than their weight and than their typical peers would lift. So I think obviously yes, if there was a one rep max uh, test in the test, then I think that we would have had a lower overall fitness age as well, yeah. Yep. Um, so, I, one other question I had, I couldn't remember what demographic you suggested this for, but you suggested increased protein intake. Yep. Why did you suggest that? Um, do you want to answer? I can answer. It was for the athletes uh, who wanted to gain weight. So, they wanted to gain muscle mass over gaining fat, of course. Uh, so, if you increase your lifting regimen and you're breaking down your muscles more and more and more, then you need a little bit more protein uh, just to restore your muscles and help them repair. And these were also, it was also the recommendation for uh, team sport athletes that wanted to uh, gain weight, muscle mass. So that's where we got that. The reason I bring it up is literature now shows that actually they shouldn't be increasing protein. Yeah, because American athletes, the average American diet actually gets enough protein even for athletes. So increasing protein intake isn't necessary even for athletes. Unless you're like Olympic level athlete. Okay. No, that's interesting. I, I mean, I haven't seen, I guess, any studies that have done that yet. Like yeah, it must be very recent, definitely. Because, yeah, I mean, all the stuff that we have learned and stuff that research that I've seen definitely says protein obviously helps for the reconstruction of muscles and rebuilding your muscles. So that'd be definitely something to look into as well. Yeah. yeah. And it, and it yeah. does do that. It's just that the American diet, we already get way more than enough. Okay. 50% usually. Definitely. It's interesting.
Thank you.